flows. So as I said on potable water, irrigation systems. Um, some buildings, I think the highest we've got is about 22 backflows in one building. These have to be tested on an annual basis. You must receive a positive test. So in water systems, we all know when, sometimes when we turn on our taps, you can get grit, you can get black, uh, um, almost like sand in it that can choke your uh, water flow. That stuff gets caught into the backflows and it can give a negative result. So you have to take the backflow, flush it out or replace it and that would be pretty expensive. But the thought is, once you get a positive result, then that contractor who performed the backflow has to file that online. The majority of municipalities in Greater Vancouver are using an online system and they track when these backflows are being tested. And it was based on a base year. So if you had say 10 and it was done every month, there's no way to consolidate them all at one time. You have to do 10 tests every year. And every year they have to be submitted. And if you don't, you get an automatically generated letter. And we've seen to the point where in Richmond, if you don't, they'll give you three warnings and then they'll shut your water off. And I don't think any council member wants to hear from a resident that doesn't have any water. <laughs> and I don't think that the cities and municipalities are going to be in any hurry to turn the water back on. Hmm. Or if they do, you're going to have to pay for it. So again, they're letting us know what the requirements are for testing. It's important that this kind of item be put onto a plan. Know in advance, bring it forward, and plan so that you satisfy what the test results are going to be. Know when you should do it, have ample time to file the reports, and budget accordingly. 